Now, because this is the number five in the no calculator section, we should be able to sense the difficulty here and know that this is supposed to be an easy question. Now, I don't want that to make you feel bad if you had trouble with it. Like, there are aspects of it that are difficult, but knowing that it's supposed to be easy, I think, can always just kind of bring us back to our own place of confidence, right? We know we're, we're supposed to be able to get this. So if we're confused, there's got to be a way out of that confusion. And we don't need to do this to solve it, but arithmetizing is a very good way to deal with confusion, especially when there are stories and we see that there's, like, variables here, like... Our brains are much better in, in the world when we have actual numbers and things to count. So you can kind of like design a situation that this story matches with so that you can better understand what the story is saying and how we would translate that into math. So that's what arithmetize really is. But when we do that, we want to make sure that it makes sense with the story. So how what's going on here? We're talking about this currency. Uh, there's called, so coins called fennings that are worth one fenning each and groschen worth 10 fennings each. Which equation represents the number of fenning coins P and Groschen coins G that have a combined value of 85 fennings? So I'm going to just kind of pick a simple scenario here, right? We need 85 fennings. So if each Groschen is worth 10, how about we just say there's eight Groschens, and then that would be another, uh, so that's, that's 80 fennings total, and then uh, another five, what is it, what letter, P? Uh, would be another five, so that would get us the 85, right? So I'm really like that's I don't know if that's what I have, but I'm just kind of thinking of it in a very simple way for the sake of having some numbers. So 80 or eight groschens is 80 fennings plus another five would be 85. This is a situation that works. These numbers are not totally random, but there's there's a logic to it. I need to make sure I, I satisfy the the requirements of the story. But now I can maybe understand the equations a bit better just by plugging those same numbers in. They should work in the equation, right? So we can see right away with choice A, 5 plus 8 is 13, not 85. So that equation must be wrong because the situation that we concocted doesn't match with the equation. Um, whereas if we did 5 plus 10 times 8, that's 5 plus 80, that's 85. That looks good. Maybe I, you know, I, I'm like looking at it now in hindsight and being like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking before, and now I have proof. But we should still try C and D just to be safe. So 10 times 5 plus 8, well, that's 58. That's no good. And then 10 times 5 plus 8, well, that's 10 times 13, which is 130. And so now I have my proof that choice B is right. Again, we don't need to do that. A lot of you are going to be able to look at this question and just kind of know what they're saying and be able to turn, translate that into math. But the point I'm trying to make is that there are times where we just kind of doubt ourselves. And that's okay. That's, the SAT is really good at making us doubt ourselves. But we have these strategies like arithmetize that bring us back to a place of comfort. And so don't be afraid to do that. There's no shame in it. And it might just give you that extra little confidence you have to like end up picking the answer you're going to pick anyway but now you're sure of it, and so why not take that 10 seconds to do it? it? It just might save you 10 points, and it's worth it, because this is an easy question, and you don't really want to kind of make a mistake here and, and lose points on something that, you know, you, you really want to lock in.